so how was how was your um your event you had the, the other day you, you went oh, out good. yeah you know i'm just uh it's kind of crazy like i i made it a mission to get out there and perform as much as i can and honestly I'll, I'll perform anywhere like i'll even perform at just a house party <laughs> you know what i mean just to like yeah. get my name out there get the practice in and reach at least one new person so i actually had two shows this last week so that's fantastic i remember um i was i was seeing the the recording of it um yeah you, you sounded great your vibe was awesome um thank you you really have you really have it you thank really, you i appreciate you ha- that you have that that thing you know what i'm saying wow so, thanks which is fantastic so i know you took off a little while almost a decade right or more from, from yeah hip-hop. yeah so what's the story behind that Man, it's it's kind of a crazy long story, but I guess the best way that I could describe it in a nutshell is um, I, when I was about 23 years old, I moved back from Los Angeles. I was there for about two years pursuing music, and I was in a band. I performed all over the Hollywood Strip. I performed on Sunset Strip outside, like street performing, you know, when you where all the tourists walk by. Um, right. Yeah. I was really doing it down there, and uh, I don't know. I just kind of got sucked into that LA lifestyle, right? And I just started to kind of like feel like I was selling myself out and my music, and like the whole reason why I got into it. And so I decided to move back home uh, up in Northern California, and I finished my album. And I got to work and like just getting out of the city and clearing my my headspace and getting back to the country where I'm from in the mountains and just like really, you know, try, dialing back into who I am. I finished an album and came out with it when I was about 23 years old. And, you know, it was going to be good. Like I was going to start promoting it and doing things with it. And then I fell in love. <laughs> 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 right. I was young and. I fell in love and head over heels and basically like my music took a back seat in, in a nutshell and my ex didn't really uh, support it that much, you know, and it was really hard because we'd fight if I'd go to shows and things like that. And so I kind of just, I really just kind of gave it up and um, I ended up marrying him and we spent almost 10 years together. Wow. Yeah, and have a child. My daughter's three. And um, just recently, within the last year, I divorced him. Okay. Yeah, so it's been it's been really crazy. <laughs> it's been quite the life change, and you know, a lot has happened in the last couple of years. And the first thing that I did once I divorced him was like. It was like I woke up and I got right back into music. And at that moment, like, I really just started writing as a means to getting shit off my chest, you know? Right. And um, it just was amazing how it was like the floodgates opened. And I just couldn't stop writing. And I just started feeling so much better as I was writing and getting everything out. um, Because I really hadn't written in almost 10 years. That's a story. That's um, that's crazy. How you said you loved, you fell in love with this person, and this person didn't love what you loved. Yeah, didn't understand it. You know, yeah, not even close. Yeah, and so, so anytime I would try to do it, it just like, you know, when you don't have that person in your corner, like rooting you on or like understanding it, like it just it took out the the beauty of it. So right. I just kind of tucked it away, you know? So, obviously it didn't work out because you stopped writing for 10 years. So, within the, that time frame, um, what did you do to, to feed yourself? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because you have, obviously you have that hunger for hip-hop. Yeah. You have, you have that desire. So, what did you do w- with it? You know what? You mean during the 10 years that I didn't do hip-hop? Yeah. It, okay, so it, it was crazy. Like, I couldn't even talk about music. Like, I'm such a lover of all music and anything that has to do with music. I literally couldn't watch 
any award shows, anything that had to, you know, like MTV Music Awards, the Grammys, like any t- kind of talent show on TV, American Idol, America's Got Talent. Like c- I, I had a hard time like going to concerts. I couldn't do anything that really had to do with music because it ate at me so bad that I, I kept thinking every time I would see someone performing or see anything that should be me. Like I should be doing that. Why the fuck am I not? Sorry. I don't know if I can cuss. Yeah, absolutely. You can. <laughs> All right. Why the fuck am I not doing that? You know, like it, it just ate at me. So, um, I kept my mind focused on everything, but that I'm a hairstylist by trade. Sure. And so I, I've done hair for almost like 14 years now, straight out of high school. And, um, I got really focused on, uh, this company, I, I got involved in network marketing. I don't know if you know what that is, but like, yes, I do. Yeah. you know, like the Mary Kay's and Amway's and I got involved in a company like that. And I did that for five years and I poured my entire life into that. And I made a lot of money. I made almost half a million dollars in that company. And, wow. uh, my ex and I did that together and we started from the ground up and started with just he and I and ended up building a team of like 6,000 people all over the world and wow. um spoke at conventions so you know i got to like get on stage and like train people and speak in front of people and share my story on stage so i really got to like still like inspire people and perform and um i built a weekly event starting with a few people and it grew within six months to 400 people showing up every single week and i, I was on stage you know hosting it and doing it um so i feel like that kind of got a little bit of that performance side of it out for me, you know, cause that is a huge part about what I love about music is being on stage too and performing. So yeah, that, that's fantastic. Like my, my whole thing is you guys are building this kind of family and wealth together, but yeah. it's really not what you want. It's more, you know what? It sounds like what he wanted. It, yeah, it, it really was. And like, um, I got so into the chasing money and wanting nice things and being, I became really materialistic. And if anyone knows me, like that is not who I am. Like I grew up dirt poor on welfare and food stamps. And like, I know how to appreciate good things and work really hard for them. And I'm kind of more of like a hippie at heart is what I always say, you know? Right. And I got, I got sucked in, you know, I, I drank the Kool-Aid, I guess you could say. And we did get all those things. We lived in a 4,000 square foot house and I had an $80,000 car. We had an Audi R8, we had a Ferrari. Um, we were living that life and I could go shopping, anything, do anything I wanted. And I still, at the end of the day was not happy. Wow. You know, like I made that level of success and still felt like there was no like true purpose to what I was doing. Well, no doubt, yeah, you had that that portion of success, but it really wasn't what you wanted to be successful in. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I have zero regrets because I learned so much from um, everything that has happened over the last 10 years. And I feel like now is way more of my time than it would have been 10 years ago when I was young and naive. I'm I'm a grown ass woman now. Like I've I've been through hell and back. I've made hundreds of thousands of dollars and then lost all of it. You know, so it's like this time around, I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I know how I'm going to get there and nothing is going to stop me. I'm laser focused on it. So at this time in your life, you know, like you say, you, you know, you had the money, you had the cars. Is it more about just a passion? Yes, it has absolutely nothing to do with money. I, uh, when I went through my divorce, I lost everything like in this last year. I mean, I, it's so much that it's actually crazy. And, you know, I had to, my car got repossessed. I was living at my best friend's house for the last nine months. I literally just got my own place like two months ago for me and my daughter. And, um, you know, I'm driving around a little beater, but I opened up my own little hair shop and I'm working and I'm fully supporting myself and my daughter, just me, you know? Wow. That's crazy. Um, so he got everything. So he no, kind of, he got nothing either. I mean, like, oh, either. Okay. no, yeah. Over, over the five years of being in that company, we ended up quitting that company. And, um, the last year of our marriage, we, you know, we really were just trying to work on fixing things between us. Cause he, he did something that pretty much the worst thing you could do in a marriage. He did that to me. And, um, when I found out, I, 
I said, you know, I'll, I'll give you one year. And if I can try to forgive you for what has happened, then we can make this work. And if I can't, then I won't. And I had to at least try for my daughter because she was eight months old when I found out, you know. Right. And that year went by and I just decided like, no, my life, life is way too short. I'm 32 years old. I have my whole life ahead of me. I've been living for someone else for so long. Now I have a child and I have a daughter at that. Like I need to be the woman that she sees growing up as an independent, strong female out there making her dreams come true. And she's doing it all on her own because I need to be that example for her. Absolutely. Yeah. So when, when did you feel that you gave yourself up to your husband and because that's what it came to come down to. Like you, you kind of just gave in. And so yeah. okay, I'm going to give my love up since you don't like it and doing this and doing that. We think, did you think he was ever jealous of your talent? I think he definitely felt threatened. Yeah, for sure. But, um, you know, I, I think it was a jealousy thing as well, you know, cause being a female rapper, like you're in, you're in a male dominated industry, you sure. know, so you're constantly surrounded by men and you know, I'm, if I'm going to the studio, it's going to be with men. If I'm performing, it's going to be with men when I, you know what I mean? And it's, and not that that means anything to do with my character. Cause I'm one of the most loyal people you'll ever meet. So that should have never been an issue, but he just couldn't handle that. He, he couldn't handle the fact that I'd be around other people getting all the attention for, from performing, you know? Yeah. So he so. never, he, cause I would have thought, Hey, Hey babe, you want to do that? Bet that let's do it together. And I'm, I'm your manager. <laughs> like, right. Like, let me sit in the, in, in the, you know, in the studio with you, make sure these motherfuckers ain't trying to do some stupid he shit. He did do that. He did you know? that. And you know what? I, I can't do that because that's not who I am. Like, I don't, I don't need that. I've never given anyone a reason to make them feel like they would need to do that. And if I can't feel like I can be myself, that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier is I just yeah. never felt like I could truly be who I was. So right. I, I wasn't giving the best of what I, of my ability to hip hop, you know? Right. So, yeah, I'm so, happy though. Now, like I, this is the happiest I've been in years. So since you couldn't be yourself, you know, because of hip hop, were you really yourself throughout the marriage? Oh, you know, I mean, like, in a way, I, yeah, I mean, I for sure was in, in certain ways. I mean, a lot of people would probably beg to differ with me, <laughs> a lot of my friends and my family, <laughs> you know, but like I said, I, I honestly have no regrets because I feel like everything in life happens for a reason. You know, some people may not believe that, but I've been through way too much in my life to, to not believe that and know that I have faith that God's putting me through everything he's putting me through to make my story that much better. No, absolutely. for the for the world to hear it you know no that's uh, absolutely like your story is, is is bugged out because like you said like you know um a lot of people have this tendency to think that money you know is success and it's a certain way it is you know just different there's different, right. levels, different ways of thinking about success you had it you lost it now you're you're building yourself back up from scratch again and mm -hmm. you and you sound like you're fucking humble from it I really am, you know, and it's like, even before, you know, the, the, the all the shit with my ex-husband, like that, that's nothing compared to what I have witnessed and been through in my life before all of that. Um, you know, so that was kind of like just the icing on the cake. And at this point, I really feel like I've been to the bottom for a long time and like, there's really nowhere else to go besides up from here. There's nothing that anyone could say to me to like pursue, persuade me to be like, Oh, you know, well, if you come do this, you can get this. No, I'm good. Like I know what I want. And I feel like that's really what's going to set me apart from most of the people out there is that I'm not desperate. I'm hungry. Right. You right. know, but I'm not desperate and I'm not willing to sacrifice since I sacrificed so much of who I was the last 10 years, I will not sacrifice one ounce of who I am now. Like I am me and you can take me for as I am, but don't try to change me one bit. Cause you know how that thing kind of goes as you start to get out there in music. Absolutely. Cause a lot of people want to put their hands in it, especially when you're a female. Um, oh yeah. The industry is definitely, like you said, male dominated and it's, it's just, it's different. You know, I think the best thing that happened now is is the internet because now you can really be the indie that you can be and really fuck with the people that you really want to fuck with that you trust to, to build with. Exactly. You know, um, and yeah. like you said, like you said, like you said earlier, you know what I'm saying? Like you went to LA, you tried it, and you went back home. Like I think, you see, back in the day, you either had to go to LA or New York to really try to find your way. 
You know yeah. what I'm saying? You don't need to really leave your town unless you want to. You know what I'm saying? And for you to go back and say, you know what? I kind of want my town. I love my town. It's and so true. That's I want to build off that. of it. Yeah, I want to yes. build off of my town. You know? Exactly. I come from a beautiful place and it's uh, kind of like a hidden gem out in Northern California and there's so much nature around me and I always hated it growing up like, oh, I can't wait to leave this place. But now that I move back, like I'm really embracing everything and I'm pulling a lot of inspiration from it. You know, no, it sounds like it because you have 10 years worth of, of fucking shit to write about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my Because your lyrics, your lyrics are on point, and and you're such a storyteller. Thank you. You know, what I'm saying we've been texting back and forth, and um, it was, I was like, man, she just has these, the sound, and 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 what you're hitting on, it, it you. And your beats actually work out really well to where it's not overtaking your lyrics. You know, there's some artists out there that are super lyrical, but the beat takes over. Right. It is underplayed so much that the lyrics are strong, but it's like, ah, oh, the music, the musicality isn't there. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, I do know what you're saying. I'm still really honing in on my sound and trying to, you know, figure out what that is and what my style is. And, you know, what I've been doing is just going on YouTube and, searching beats to kind of see like what I vibe with and I'll go through like sometimes a hundred beats before I find something that really speaks to me. Right. You know, that takes time. That takes time. That takes persistence. You know, that's, that's a lot of effort. I think that's what people tend to make a lot of mistakes too, is that, um, it's time. You either waste time or make, um, and make your time for you and gravitate. Okay. You know, you say you have a day job, you know, you have your own little business now with, we're doing your hair, you have your child, you have your own place now that's soaking yep. up the time, but yeah. you're, you're but finding time to go out to perform and to record. Yeah, I think it's really important. And that was actually what I learned from being in that network marketing company was the the self-development. I've, I'm really big on reading. Um, I read a lot of self-development books and, uh, you know, success books and things like that. And that was one of the things I took away was like doing those little things every single day that compound over time add up. So I, I make sure I have goals daily, like, okay, I got to do at least one thing for music every single day, whether it's posting on Instagram, you know, shout it. And then I always say I have to write for at least 15 minutes every day. It doesn't even have to make sense what I'm writing. Like, I just need to hone in on my craft. I I actually do the same fucking thing, believe it or not. Yeah. So, so, um, I take inventory once a month. So every day I write down like a diary of what I've done for that day for the podcast or I write as well. I wrote two books last year. I'm actually nice. working on an urban love story now Very and, cool. um, called Brooklyn love. I'm, I'm originally from New York, from Brooklyn, from Bed-Stuy. Nice. And, uh, My family's from Brooklyn too. Oh, word. That's what's up. Yeah. And, and now, now I live in Atlanta. Cool. Um, and Atlanta has a great music scene. Yeah. Um, great, great, um, um, vibe over here. And, um, now it comes to the point to where at the end of the month, I take inventory of what I've done or didn't do and hold myself mm-hmm. accountable, hold myself accountable. So if I didn't write or if I didn't, I didn't contact someone or if I didn't do a podcast, I failed. And I'm like, yeah. yo, motherfucker, what have you been doing? You've been lazy with it. Or I give myself a pat on the back to, yo, you crushed it in January. Shit. Let's see what you can do in February. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, yeah. And you and you challenge yourself. So I, I see I, I see where you're headed. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I follow you on IG. I'm, I'm I'm witnessing your movement live. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you're saying nothing's gonna stop you. And you and you had obstacles already. So I'm sure that's not gonna be too hard for you to maneuver around brick walls. But, oh God, no! <laughs> but, <laughs> I actually work better under pressure like that. <laughs> right. So, so what do you see now that's different from ten years ago to now that you're coming back in that has changed for you? That has changed in, in the industry. Oh my God, it's like a completely different world. It's almost like <laughs> what's that movie called where the guy's like underground forever and then he comes out? <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, and he, you know, he comes up. He comes up from under. His parents made him live underground for his whole yes, life. Yes. Yeah. Um. He's the George of the Jungle guy. Anyway, Brennan Fraser, that movie. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, so I, I almost felt like that coming back into the music scene because, you know, 10 years ago, like, uh, Instagram, I don't think was around, right? Like, uh, Facebook was barely around. and YouTube just started, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I had a couple of embarrassing videos on YouTube that I cannot figure out for the life of me how to delete. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it's all good because Post Malone, he's got some crazy-ass shit out there, too. So. <laughs> right, exactly. But yeah, um, I feel like 
to me, what the way I look at it, it was all positive. Like it was so hard back then to come up. Like, you know what you're saying? Like now you, by the hit of a button, my music can be anyone in the world can buy my music at the hit of a button where before it was like, you had to get your shit distributed everywhere in all the stores. And like, right. you had to literally walk into the stores and be like, record stores and be like, Hey, will you sell my album in here? You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like the opportunity now and, and with social media and everything, like what we were saying earlier, this is like, this is the playground for people who are serious. You can get out there. And, and my whole thing is like, I don't need to be a millionaire. Like I, if that comes because of me creating my art and people are loving it, great. But to me, as long, if I can pay my bills and I could do this full time and provide a great life for my daughter and put money away and like buy a house and like live and be happy doing that. To me, that that is success right there. I, I, you, hey, you're speaking all the right things to me right now because I, I feel the same way about this podcast. Yeah. If, if, if this thing could pay the bills off and we can live comfortably and just have fun with life and, and I can still talk to, to fantastic, interesting, beautiful people like yourself, then I'm like, I'm, I won. You're winning. Exactly. Yeah, like abso- it, Absolutely. And I feel like that message needs to be heard more because especially in hip hop nowadays, everything's all about money. And like... It, you know, it always has been, you know. What I'm saying? It back, always has been. Back in the, back in the, you know, back when it started, it always had started with the gold chains, the gold teeth, and then from there, it started having the, the, the cars. You know, every B Rock him, they would have freaking Rolls Royces and right. Bentleys in the in the car, in the videos before anybody else did. You know what I'm saying? Run DMC right. had the big gold, you know, fluffy uh, chains, and we glorified the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? We made the hood look good. I grew up in Tomkins Projects, which is a block away from Marcy Project, where Jay Z lived at. So I grew up around. So in Brooklyn? Yeah, in Brooklyn. So my grandma grew up in in the Brooklyn projects too, but she lived there like in the 50s on Cherry Avenue. I don't know if you know where that's at. I do know where that's at. That's on the other side. And totally different from the 50s to the 90s. It was a crazy gutter. You know what I'm saying? You had Project Wars where everybody, people just losing lives are crazy. And it, it, it comes down to when the music came out of New York in the beginning, you know, over 30 years ago now, which yeah. is crazy. Um, a, it has evolved, you know what I'm saying? So, so in such a great way, but the glorification of getting the bag, you know, um, like I call it the rapper's kit. You got to get the tattoos, the fucking gold chains, yeah. you know, and the, the it, car. It, it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's boring now. I think that's, that's so played out, you know, and then talking about women, talking about, yo, you hold this, hold that. Is there, okay, bro, that's done. Show me, show well, me what you just, got. It's played out. Yeah. And it's just not achievable for most people. So like, it's just not realistic. You know what I mean? Like, um, there were, there were a lot of people also holding it down in hip hop. Like that Eminem is a perfect example of someone who, didn't really boast like that, you know, like he, nah, not he bragged on, he bragged on the struggle and like, <laughs> like that's kind of how I, how I would compare myself as far as like storytelling about my life. Like right. I'm going to put it all out on the line and I'm not going to be embarrassed about it. And it's gonna, almost going to be the opposite of, you know, bragging in a sense. So let me ask you this then. So when did you one fall over hip hop and two figured out this was the true genre for you to move into? Like, because yes. you, you sound like you're a music lover. You know what I'm saying? I am. I love all music, but um, my first love was actually like grunge rock, like Bush and yeah. uh, Nir- Nirvana. Right. That's really like the first love that I had. And then um, when I was 12, my mom gave me my first journal. And my mom was uh, addicted to pills my entire life. So she. Yeah. You know, she really put us through a lot. She was a single mom. I was the oldest. I'm the oldest of four. And so I was pretty much like the dad. And she was in and out of jail, in and out of rehab our whole life. And it just really gave me a lot of resentment, you know. So she gave me a journal when I was 12. And she told me to just start writing. Like, just get your feelings out. It doesn't even have to make sense. Just write. And at first I thought it was stupid. And, you know, I remember one night I just couldn't take it. And so I went and I opened it up. And I started writing and I just cussed my mom out. You know, I'm saying every, everything you can imagine that you'd want to say to someone that you feel like you hate. And I felt so much better afterwards. Like, wow, that felt really good. And so I became addicted to writing and I would just, and then, so the writing turned into poetry and then I would create poetry. And then, uh, when I was 16 years old, I heard my first, like, I grew up listening to like Tupac and Lauren Hill, you Mm -hmm. know, Eminem, like total, 90s hip-hop and everything but uh 
underground hip hop is what really got me into realizing that this was what I wanted to do. The first underground hip hop song that I heard when I was 16 by was by Living Legends. I don't know if you know who Living Legends are. No, I don't. Um, they're from the Bay Area. And hieroglyphics. I don't know if you've heard of them. Either. I have. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I started, I started diving into it, and like, the reason why I fell in love with underground hip hop was because it was so lyrical, and I felt like I could really relate to it. And I started branching out, and you know, then I started really learning about it, like KRS One. You know, like I saw him perform live, and that was when I was really like, okay, I want to learn more about what the hip hop culture is, and like where it stemmed from, and obviously, it's all stemmed back from new york you know and right. and what it was created for and, and and how it all came about and everything and so when i was 16 i started like really rapping because growing up i always would rap the guy parts while my girlfriends would like sing the girl parts and all in songs you know right. <laughs> so i always i always knew i had that rhythm and i knew that i could do it and then a bunch of guy friends when I was 16, they built like a little in-home studio and they said, Hey, why don't you come over and like get inside and see what you got, you know? And I was like, all right. And I think they were just trying to be nice more than anything, but I got in there and I recorded. And when I came out, they all looked at each other like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> hell of surprise. <laughs> right. That was it. I was 16. And that was when I knew like, that was what I wanted to do. And I started going wow. to hip hop shows all the time. Like I became obsessed with the culture. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a great fucking story right there. So what is it like to be a female in hip hop being underground? Like what challenges do you see that the industry has not changed as of yet for women? Um, I think it's kind of hard to tell so far because I'm still so freshly new into it. Like I, I've just gotten back into it six months ago. Um, I, I don't think, so it's kind of funny everywhere I perform, like I, this last show that I performed at, it was like, there was a lot of like real people there. You know what I mean? Like the guy that was pu putting on the show, he didn't know I was performing. And so I went up to him and was talking to him and the guy who actually puts on the event, he's like the big guy there. He kind of was plugging me in, you know? And so he's like, yeah, but is she like actually good? He like said that in front of me to the man. And wow. I just sat, and I just sat there, you know, because automatically you're judged if you're a female like this. You ain't, you can't rap, you know. Right. Um. And so he, the guy's like, just trust me, put her on, you know, like that, like. And the kid can't say no to the guy because the guy's the one who runs the whole thing. <laughs> <But> <laughs> it was funny, so. Uh, I went on first, right? I'm like, I'll go first. I don't even care. Like, I, I love this shit to me. I'm like, I'm hella humble. Like, especially in the beginning, I, I don't even want people to know what I do before I get on stage. Like, I love that shock factor. Yeah, it's, it's the whole adrenaline part of all of it. As soon as I say, what's up, everybody? Like, everything stops. And then it's like crickets and everyone looks toward to the front because it's just not something you see every day, you know? Right. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, once it once I get on stage and it starts coming out, it's like I enter into another realm. I don't even know kind of what happens. Something takes over me, and I just, I love it. And so, you know, when I get off stage, I get hella respect from everybody. Like, all even other performers, like, it's insane. So for me, I feel like the, I've gotten so much love everywhere that I've gone and everything that I've been doing. I don't know. I can't speak for other females in the industry. I can only speak for myself, and I feel like, no one can say anything to me because everything I'm saying is real life shit. I'm, I'm rapping about my life and I'm right. as real as it gets. When, it, when, when you look at me and you see what I'm doing, you, there's no denying it. Cause I'm not trying to be someone that I'm not, I'm being right. who I am. So you either like it or you don't. Right. You know no, what I mean? That's powerful right there. That's straight power right there. Like, do you see yourself doing like maybe a small local tour in, 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 in Northern Cali? Like, are you trying to sit something up, up like that to really get your feet wet to say, hey, let me try to get a few shows back to back, like in a week or like a weekend, and you just go heavy with it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I have that. That's definitely part of my plan right now. I've just been trying to perform everywhere I can. And every time I have a show, somehow I get another one booked be right before it ends. And so it's just kind of been happening like that. Um, but I'm focused on finishing my EP that will release next month. Do you and, have a name uh, for it? Oh, I got a few. I have not decided yet. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. But my, actually my first single release is tonight at eight o'clock. I know. 
That's so fantastic. That I'm really excited about. I'm super happy. I'm excited season. for you on a real. Like I'm real. I'm real super excited for you. Thank um, you. What I'm gonna do is with that song, uh, if we all, with your permission, of course, I'm gonna see if I can try to put that on, a, on the on the tail end of um of this podcast, oh, yeah. uh, or maybe in the beginning. Maybe do that in the beginning. Um, yeah, that people for hear sure. it first. Yeah, so um, would love that. That would be fantastic. Like, um, it's so much going on with you, right? Yeah. You have, you have this background. You have this tremendous, tremendous story, which I find fascinating. You know. Not that you went through a struggle, but hey, you went through a fucking struggle, right? Then you right. towards your to your music. Now you have you have your daughter with you. How do you introduce hip hop to your child? Yeah, so that's kind of um, that's going to be the fun part of all of this, right? With <laughs> my ex, because he doesn't get it, so it's almost like you know he he talked mad shit in the beginning of me getting back into music, like. If anyone could try to crush your dreams, that's what he was doing to me. And he just recently has started becoming more supportive because he sees that it's happening. You can't deny it, you know? Right. Um, but, is he, so, but is he, I'm sorry, but is he interested more because you're doing well and he's saying, hey, good for you? Or is he interested because he may say, hey, maybe I can make something of it? <laughs> or maybe he just don't want me talking hella shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> that too. You know, what I'm you know what I mean? Like, cause he is a huge for- force behind, behind my inspiration and in my music. Right. Um, I think it, it might, I don't know. It might be a little bit of everything, honestly, but either way, I don't care. As long as it's, he's just not being negative about it. I'm fine with it. You know what I mean? No, no doubt. Um, but my daughter loves it. Like she'll be like, mom, mommy, put on your music. You know, like I, I cuss in my music. Yeah. But for me, like, I feel like cussing is a form of expression and I only use it when I feel that it's really necessary to really get my point across. Like I am really put some passion into it. That's when I cuss. But, um, I feel like most of the stuff that I talk about, you know, it, uh, I'm not like, um, talking about sex and shit like that and drugs and you know i'm really just talking about my life and stuff and so i feel like for the most part it's appropriate and um i plan on eventually like bringing her on tour with me like i I see big things in my future for her and i when she's with me like traveling the world with me and being right there on that side of that stage watching mom perform that sounds fantastic for thousands of people no i hear that shit like i want that for you on the real like that that sounds badass my question for you is, do do you ever look at the level of how big you may want to get and you, how big you may not want to get? Like, do you want to yeah. always be like that that underground rapper that does well? Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? That does really well. A lot of underground rappers may not be mainstream, but they do really well for themselves. And they are traveling the world. Um, or do you want to be that pop sensation, that pop rapper? You know what? I want to be whatever I can be where I can, where I can still just be myself a hundred percent. So if that means, you know, becoming something big and famous, as long as I can still be in charge of my life and be what I want to be. I mean, so Cardi B, she's a perfect example. Like I, I got mad respect for that girl. Like her, her style of music, it's not for me. Right. Like I don't really listen to it, but who she is as a person I'm not really for either, but what I have to say, (laughs) what I have to say is that she's real as fuck. And I respect that. You know what I mean? Like she does not sacrifice who she is one bit and as ratchet as she is or however she wants to be, she is her. And like, I got respect for that. You know what I mean? Like, and it's cool to see that she can be herself and, and look at, look at what she has achieved because of it. Like Absolutely. that's inspi- it's inspiring to me because it makes me it makes me realize look, like I don't need to try to fit into any mold. I can be who I am because most people are afraid to be who they want to be. And when they can see other people not giving a fuck about what other people think, they they want to live through that because they can't do that for themselves because we all care too much what people think. No, you're absolutely right. See, and this is where I think like the Love and Hip Hop series, right? Mm-hmm. And how they betray all the women on that show. I've never watched it. You never watched it? So pretty much it's just ratchet as fuck, right? And, yeah. And they're always throwing shit at each other and shit like that. Right. right. Like the Bad Girls Club is kind of what yeah, it's like. Yeah, pretty much. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, just, it's pretty much just like that, but a hip-hop version, right? hmm And when you have hip-hop, which is not a lot of female artists in hip-hop, Mm-mm. you know, there's always been 
um, kind of like your your bunches of, of, of female artists coming out, and then it dwindles down, it gets male right. dominated again, and it comes up again. And how Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, you know, I I think Nicki Minaj, I like her music. Um, Cardi B, I like some of her songs. Mm-hmm. Um, again, but she, you know, she doesn't write her own stuff, which is fine for me because not a lot of rappers write their own shit anyway. A lot of people have ghostwriters anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> and, but that's like any genre of music. Hey, that's like saying, hey, it happens with everything. Yeah, like you know, Britney Spears ain't write shit. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, not and, not everyone is. Uh, some people are performers, and then exactly. some people are musicians, and that's the Abs- difference. And both absolutely deserve what, the respect that they get. You know? Absolutely. If we look at J Lo, she's a straight performer. She's not gonna exactly. She, she's not gonna write her own fucking no. Own song. But she kills it like that. And right. Britney Spears is another perfect example. Like they are performers, and they and so is Cardi B, and they kill it. So, and my thing is, when when is hip hop gonna allow women not to be? So far against each other. When, when the men start rapping to each other, start dishing each other, it's a strictly beef. And then when mm-hmm. women get involved, it, it, it turns it on its head. It gets more uglier, or the hype around it is right. more devastating. How do you see yourself trying to avoid shit like that? Uh, I, I, have thought, I have thought about that a lot. Um, I just am not a type of person that will feed into it, honestly, because it's just, it's petty, I think. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like, what I've noticed is going out there, like we all need to be supporting one another because there, there's more than enough fans to go around, right? Like not everyone's going to like my music and that's fine, but I only want the people who like my music to like my music. And I feel like I'm not going to feel like I'm in competition with any other female rapper out there because we all have something completely different to bring to the table right. and it's all love. So I feel like as long as I'm always putting out love and supporting other female artists, they're going to give it back to me. And if they don't, then that's fine. That's on them. That's not on me. Damn. Can we ask you this as well? Like, do you ever feel like hip hop is too feature heavy? You know, there's, there's some artists that you look at on their album and mm-hmm. most of the albums, there's a bunch of features and you, you, right. go see, you go see them in a concert. They have one verse on that song and it's, it's over. Right, and the artist is not there to do the rest of the, the other artist is not there to do the rest of the song with them. Dude, this yes, this is something I've been seeing a lot of since I've been performing. Um, it's actually kind of crazy, and I think why I stand out so much is because I every literally almost every performance that I've done in, in the last six months, and I've performed probably like almost ten times, ten different shows with you know at least five to six different other performers at each show. Um. 90% of them rap over their lyrics. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like the whole song is playing and they're just rapping over it and they're not rapping entirely the, the entire verse. They're just like coming in and rapping, you know what I mean? And then just like, it's more about like the swag of like what they're doing. And it's cool. Like it works for a lot of people, but when you see it over and over and over again, it, it's, it's almost like you're just kind of sitting there like, okay, I want to feel something and you're not like really feeling something from that performance when people are doing that. So do you feel like right now with hip hop in this current state, what's out there and, and I, would, I would say pop music right now, right? Mm-hmm. Do you feel anyone that, because I, I, me personally, I don't feel like anyone is like that right now. Except for your J. Cole's or your Kendrick's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, J. Um, Cole, Kendrick, I think NF is killing it. I yeah. love him. Oh, he, yeah. like he, I would compare my music probably most like him in a sense of, uh, just yeah, he's he's just real he's real as fuck you know yeah. i like and post I'll, malone myself like i'm yeah. like I'm a, I'm a pretty big i even know i even know he was white <laughs> really <laughs> no i didn't know he was white until my kids told me yeah. so i was like and i was like, oh damn i was like he he got it and then i when i when i dove into it more i was like bet let me see what he's about and i said you know what i, I like his style like, i, I oh, definitely yeah. like it. and he actually if you listen to what he's saying he actually says some shit he does, I, and he's got a great story, a come up yeah, story too. He does. Logic is another one that I love. Um, Logic is a good one, yes. You know, so yeah, there's a handful of like those real MCs that are out there that are that have made it, and they're they're holding it down. But I think that there needs to be more because um, people really respond well to it and they like it. But the issue is, is that just a lot of there's not a lot of people. I, I shouldn't say there's not a lot because there's a lot of great artists that are indie right now that are that are still doing big things like a lot of female rappers i've seen too yeah um, I have. 
And that's why I have the podcast. The podcast for me is strictly for indie and underground rappers. Like I'm not going nice. after. I'm not trying to go after. You know these 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 folks are really big because you know what you're gonna see them on either BET, or MTV. You're gonna get you're gonna get their story from right. those major networks. I'm looking to get the platform for the underdog. You know what I'm yeah. saying? For the for the underground rapper that doesn't have that platform to really get their story out and get that that true story from them now. So people can really follow their story. Because that's what people really follow, right? Is people want to know about you. Right. I think you know? that's awesome you're doing that. And it's kind of cool you're going to grow this collective of, of rappers and who knows what's going to happen, you know, with some of them that you've interviewed. No, exactly. That's the whole thing. I end up also interviewing people who are travelers and entrepreneurs and you you're part of that both, right? You're an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. you're a hip hop artist, you know, and that's what you have to say that you are. You can't say, Hey, I'm striving to be one. You are one. Right. You know what I'm saying? And depending what level you want to be at, that's totally up to you. Cause you can say, yo, I'm fine today right now performing my little shows. But I'm really focusing on my hair salon. Or you can say my hair salon is paying the bills right now, but the main focus is to like 2020 to pop this off even more. You know what I'm saying? Right. And either one is fine because that's your decision. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like you, you're you definitely going to be winning because now you really have, you have yourself back. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm already winning in my eyes. Like that's, uh, I think what's really going to help me on this venture is the fact that everything I do is a win to me. And, um, it's always just going to continue to keep getting better. And I do have big goals for 2020. So know? how do you, how do you prevent yourself from losing yourself again or allowing that to happen? Oh, it just, it's just built in me now. Like I don't there, it's not even something that I would even play with. You know what I mean? Like I just, because I know who I am, like, it's not even something that crosses my mind. If, if anything came to me, I just instantly would be able to turn it down if it wasn't something that I felt comfortable with doing. I, I think the biggest thing that I've learned over the last few years is to just follow my heart and trust my gut. And so if something, an opportunity comes my way, like, I'll sit on it and think about it. And I really just have to go with that gut feeling of, does this feel right or does it not feel right? And go with yeah. that, you know? Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. Like... Your, your yeah. story is badass. Your music is fantastic. Thank you. So, what do you do? I know you say you, you, you run through a lot of beats. Yeah. And do you write first and then look for a beat, or is it beat first? Because everyone's a little bit different. Everyone's a little bit different. Yeah. Right? So, how, what, what's your process look like? Yeah. So, usually what I do is I'll find a beat and that could take hours or it could happen in minutes. Honestly, it just depends yeah. on what I'm, what I'm feeling. So, I will just go through beats and when I find something that I'm vibing with, then I just replay it and I keep playing it and I just kind of fill it out. And I just think about like, what is this, what is this making me feel right now? Like what kind of emotion am I feeling from this? And then whatever it is that it's bringing out in me, then I think like, okay, so with that, with that feeling, like what are some things, you know, that I've been through in my life that uh, where I have felt that way before, and then I kind of just think back about my life and in, in different scenarios and situations. And then I get inspired to write on it. And then I write to that beat in that moment. Um, and that's how a song is created. Uh, that, that process is dope. Like I'm, I'm yeah. a super, I'm a super fan of yours. Like, Thank you. I appreciate that, Johnny. No, definitely. Because, um, after listening to your, your music and I, I, I put you on, I listened to you on Spotify. And you were like, oh, no, no, don't listen to that. I was like, man, a long time ago. I was like, no. Yeah. Good. I'm glad and, it says the year on there because I'm like, yeah. man, like people go on there and they see that album. And I'm like, I'm I'm pretty proud of a lot of the songs, but some of them, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> no, but I think that's dope. You know why? Because I think you have to take inventory of what, what you sounded like, what you did that time around. It's true. And how yeah. you can see your growth. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it's all about is your growth, right? So. Yeah. It's like when I did my first podcast, I was like, yo, like, why did I say that? Why, why right. would, you know, like, <laughs> you know, kind of listen back to everything. I'm like, yo, you sound like a fucking dickhead with that, bro. Like, what, <laughs> like, what was that question? Like, where did that come from? Why did you edit yeah. that out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But as you continue to go on, you're going to see your growth and you're going to keep on making, I guess, not better music, but you're going to make music on how you feel. Yeah, exactly. And like it, you, you get better as you go, you know, and yeah. I was, I was 22 years old when I wrote that album and I'm really proud of it, honestly, because it, it talks a lot about my life, but I'm excited for all the new shit that I have coming out because I'm coming back with a vengeance this time and I'm, I'm excited about it. 
No, I hear that. Has anyone questioned you about your choice? Has anyone really come up to you, family, friends, you know what I'm saying, and just questioned about your decision to go all in on hip hop? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Everyone like believes in me hundred percent. Besides my ex, no one else. You know, he doesn't fucking count. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't count exactly. No. He doesn't fucking uh, count. So you yeah. know, everybody everybody, like all of my clients, like even people that you know, like you, they don't like hip hop, like you know that they're not into hip hop. They're they support me, they like repost all my stuff on Instagram and Facebook and like it's nothing but love from people because they know like I'm not shy about what I've been through in my life. I, I openly talk about it because I feel like I, it's, it's who I am. And like, I used to be so embarrassed to talk about like how I was raised and what happened to me growing up and like all the different things I went through. I was embarrassed of it, you know? And now it's like, no, this is who I am. And like, I'm going to share it. And I hope that you'll accept me for who I am. And, And people are responding really well to it because I feel like, like what I was saying earlier is everyone wants to be that way, you know, and they feel comfortable around me. Do you feel like you may start a tradition, you know, going forward with your daughter, meaning that your mom, no doubt she had her struggle, her strife, her issues. She gave you your first journal. Are mm-hmm. you going to follow that path and give your daughter a journal as well and see where that goes with her? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I I already, like, put so much stuff in front of her. I'm going to put every instrument in front of her. <laughs> I'm, like, hoping she's going to want to do something with music, you know. But I right. obviously, if, if she doesn't want to, I won't push it. But, yeah. I will for sure be doing all of that. No, that's dope because I think I think between music, arts, a kids has to be exposed to that. Like, yeah, I totally you, agree. You know, like the whole thing of going to school is cool if that's what you want to do and that's your option. But I've always told my kids, "They'll go after your passion. I got your back." Yeah. You know, I don't want you going to school wasting a lot of money just to say, you know, you went you went in for criminal justice, but you're just fucking working at Best Buy. So <laughs> true. You know? That happens a lot. Yeah. That does happen a lot because they're just going to satisfy their their parents' need and the parents are vicariously living through their children. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the goal to yeah. really have not and not, not to dilute the education system at all, but I'm self taught. I pretty much have an eighth grade education. Mm-hmm. I, I dropped out of school in ninth grade. Wow. So, you know, for for me, it was always about self development, self care. Yeah, I, I was always an avid reader, so I always read shit. I was, you know, and once I I was interested in something, I would just devour it, right? Yeah. You said you read a lot as well. Right? Yeah. What are you reading currently? Yeah. Currently, I'm not reading anything at the moment. But, oh, your um, last book. Huh, uh, my last book. Um. Man, I got to think about that. Honestly, like, it's been a while since I read because I've been so focused on writing. Right, right. You know, that's really what I've been doing. But anything from, like, uh, John Maxwell to Darren Hardy, like, I, I really like a lot of the success books. Um, Think and Grow Rich is a, one of my favorites that I've read. Yeah. Uh, Rich, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. Um, you know, Outwitting the Devil was a really good one. Um, God, there's so many, but... <laughs> No, that's that's dope. That's that's fantastic. Like my thing, yeah. my, I guess my other question for you too is like, did, did you ever feel a time to where you read all these books, you got all this advice, and now you just have to make the move, right? You just have to put action to it. There's, there's mm-hmm. no more you can do. Have you yeah. ever had that fear to where it stopped you from moving forward? No, uh, uh-uh. I because um. I'm at the point in my life to where it's like, it's all or nothing. You know, I, I've, I've been stripped of everything. So at this point, like, I don't feel like I could lose any more than what I've lost. Cause I, I gave up my entire life. I left everything and started from the ground up. So from here on out, it's like, I almost feel like Eminem in eight mile. Like, I feel like that is my life. Like I'm in the, the thick of it right now and I got nothing to lose and that's why every time I step on that stage or every time I step in that studio or every time I get a chance to talk about hip hop I, I give it 100% because I feel like I'm a warrior and I'm on the battlefield and I'm going to war for myself and my life and nothing is going to get in my way you know I, I believe it's not <laughs> I believe it's nothing yeah, like, at all Yeah, 
I'm so awesome. laser focused. And like when I set my mind to something, it, there's really no stopping it. Cause I, I, I'm in survival mode right now is what it is. And I've been in survival mode most of my life and I'm really good at it and I know how to do it well. And almost like when things are going too good in my life, I almost like, it kind of like scares me and I get weirded out. Like, Oh, things are too good. Like something bad's going to happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Um, yeah. No, but no, I think you're doing everything right. You're doing everything how you feel. And I think that's yeah. how that's how it should be, right? It should be about you you making actions on your feelings. On yeah. And how you how you want to move is going to be exactly how you want to do it this time around. Cuz there's no there's no expectation from nobody else. There's no trying to please somebody. There's no asking anyone. You know yeah. It's an amazing feeling like I can literally do what I want to do. Yeah, you're fucking free. Congratulations. Yeah, Congratulations on your fucking freedom. <laughs> Thank you. You know, and I got a good group of friends that are behind my back. Like, I got two girls, my girl Cam, Cammy and Jenny. Like, they're my number one supporters. They're pretty much with me. They come with me to every show. I mean, they're, like, helping me every step of the way. You know, so building that team is really what I'm focused on doing right now, too, is, like, building, I call it the gold squad. You know, the people yeah, yeah. that are in my corner really helping me, like, keeping, you know, just keeping by my side. So how did that good, the Gold Squad develop? How did your name develop? How that all came about? Like Shawnee Gold? Yeah. So my real name is Chantel Goldstein. And oh, okay. Yeah, and so my nickname is Shawnee. Everyone's always called me Shawnee because Chantel is hard to pronounce. Everyone butchers that. Um, and so Shawnee Gold, I just took off the Steen, and that became my name when I lived in L.A. And wow. the first song I came out with... I was in this band with this guy, Michael Sean, and he came up with, it's Shawnee Gold. <laughs> I, I made my first song out of that, and it was like Shawnee Gold stuck ever since. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's dope, because there's always a story behind a name. So I, I yeah. love that. I definitely love that. So it what is do you, my real name, so. <laughs> yeah, which is dope, right? It's just, it's yeah. just cut apart. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So when you're creating your music, do you find yourself, are you the type of person that you listen to more hip-hop, or do you stop listening to hip-hop, period, so you won't be influenced you, you mean over the last 10 years? 10 years or even recently since you got back in the you know, in studio, have you kind of stopped listening to hip hop so it won't influence oh, your writing? Yeah, yeah. No, if anything, I've listened, been listening to it more because I want to okay. know like, like, so I'm really big on research. If I'm going to do something like I'm going to be the, I'm going to strive, I should say, to be the best at it. So I want to know what's out there. Like, I want to know what are people listening to right now? And like, I dive deep into it and you know, I'm always listening to all the new music I'm listening to the content. I'm watching how they're performing. I'm looking at their Instagram, see what the, how their branding is. And I'm looking at everything so that I can kind of, you know, compare like what I'm doing to what they're doing and how different it is. And I almost like well, I'm striving to be completely opposite of a lot of what I'm seeing because it's, I just think it's, it's good to be different and refreshing, you know? Do you feel you just being who you are already and yeah. just being the lyricist that you are and just being honest with your music? Is that going to be different enough for you? Yes. hundred percent. Good. I know it is. It already like that. Like that's the one thing I know I'll never change is like, Oh, you like, you know, I've had some, some people like you should dress sexier when you perform or like, you know, you should like not be so aggressive when you rap. And it's like, who's no. telling you this shit? <laughs> right. I, I have had a couple people. Well, I should say like one in particular, a friend of mine that, that told me that. And I really was just like, wow, like, no, I know that. I, but, you know, I, I listen to what other people say to a certain extent. And then I just kind of, you know, that's their opinion. And that's fine. But I know who I am, like I said earlier, and that's not going to change. No, that's um, that's kind of cliche, right? It's kind of it's kind of almost a status quo for, for being a female rapper. Yeah, exactly. You know, and if you do that, that's almost like you selling out. That's yeah, like, you, know, exactly. you know what? That's that's your pretend, that's your particular rapper's kit. Then we get the and high I, heels, I did the tight once. outfit. Yeah, I did and, that when I was twenty three and when I lived in LA, and I was like, "What the fuck am I doing? I, I would never do that again for no amount of money." No, it makes no sense because it t it takes away from true essence of who you are. Exactly. You know, and if, especially since you create your own music, that plays a big part in how you feel. You yeah. Know what I'm so yeah. if you're not feeling well because you're not dressing well, your music is gonna come out totally different. You just because you are so right. You're so right. You know, being so, comfortable and being me is a hundred percent 
like when I think about what I'm going to wear when I get on stage, I get all factors into that because I need to feel 100% comfortable or I'm not going to give the performance that I know I could. No, absolutely. So imagine like, yeah, imagine you had high heels, some tight outfit on, and you try to yeah. you try and do the super lyrical, you know, feel 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 the moment type of song, and you're just not dressed apart. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. There's no way. No. So that's why I know like what I'm doing is it's working and it's going to work, you know? And like I said, I don't have, I, this time around with my music, it's different. Like I have goals, but I don't have expectations that I'm putting on myself, you know? So I know where I'm going to go and I know I'm going to get there, but I'm not, I'm not having these crazy expectations to set myself up for failure. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Cause you know what? At the end of the day that because you're doing it your way is going to be the right way. Exactly. And and whether the industry wants to fuck with you or not is not really going to make a difference because all you need is a microphone and a computer nowadays. And yeah, and it. I can. I I mean, I honestly like. I don't. I I'm not out there searching for a record deal. That's not what I'm doing. I want to do it independently, and I know that I can. And I know that like my goal is to go on tour in 2020. You know, so that's what I'm working towards is putting out this year. I want to put out as much content as I can and continue to build my fan base locally in my in the Sacramento area, and let it organically branch out from there, and go on tour next year. No, that'd be, that'd be badass. Like, you have to. You owe that to yourself. That's a huge I, goal yeah. um, to have because you, you need to do that. Like, that's almost yeah. like self care for you right there. Like, hip hop, I can see, is really your life. And it is. You didn't take care of yourself this past 10 years without it. No. Have you ever seen the movie Brown Sugar? Yeah, of course. Yeah, like, that movie is like. It explains a lot of like my love for hip hop. It really, it's a lifestyle for me. It's not something I do. It's who I am. Yeah. Damn, yeah. that's so fucking dope, bro. That's so dope. Thank you. Like, <laughs> Thank you. No, nah, cause like I appreciate it. Even the way you come off, you know, you're you're straightforward with it. We're not super fucking cocky about it. You know what I'm saying? You know what you want. You have this presence about you, and um, you can feel it through your music. You can you can hear it in your voice now in your conversation, and you, some Appreciate some that. some people just don't have it. They don't, you know what I'm saying? Right. They don't. Or they're, they're they're too busy trying to be something else than they should be because they're afraid of who they really are. Right. And you're you're super comfortable with who you are. You already know that yo, I'm not gonna change anything about me to just to fit in. Like it's either you rock with me or you fucking don't. Yeah. Exactly, and there's enough people in the world that will want to rock with me. Oh yeah, there's seven fucking billion people. You're gonna find right? a, few, a few thousand. <laughs> you're gonna find a few hundred thousand, maybe a few million that's gonna fuck with you. <laughs> exactly. You know, I went um, to Hollywood a couple months ago, and I met with some A and R's from from Atlantic Records, right. and I performed for them, and I got some of the best advice that I could have gotten from them, you know, and that was like, you know, you see, they were telling me like, you see all these people on Instagram, all these rappers, musicians, whatever that have hundreds of thousands of followers, but it's fake. Like, are those real fans? Are they actually really buying their music? Are they purchasing tickets to go to their shows? Are they purchasing their merch and sporting it? Most of them are not. He said, don't, don't focus on trying to get hundreds of thousands of followers. You don't need that many follow. If you can, you know, get 15 to 20,000 true fans, true real fans that that's support you. you. Yep. Like that's all you need to really be successful in life absolutely. and actually make a living at it, you know? Absolutely. That's absolutely right. Cuz you do, you do look at that. You can look at a lot of people on IG right now that have hundreds of thousands of people and you're like, "Well, what are you doing with it?" Like Exactly. The, the people just you, you just want this number. What does the number mean to you? You know, and for me, I'm growing my IG, but I don't want to grow it super huge. I want to grow it to your point to where I have active people fucking with me. Yeah, exactly. And, like I want to grow it big if it grows organically like that. Absolutely. You I'm know never going to pay for yeah. it ever. And I can tell my shit's working because I see the data from the people who listen to the podcast. I can say, oh, exactly. wow, this shit grew over fucking a month. I said, I'm doing something right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what yeah. you want. And for same thing with you with your music sales. And you see all those plays on, on Spotify, you're like, yo, I'm doing something right. The people are truly fucking with me. That's and, the thing, yeah. And you're gonna see that most most of the time that like, your your songs are gonna hit so many people that they might not they might not, they might not follow you on IG, but they're fucking with you on your Spotify. 
Yeah, that's kind of crazy, huh? It is because a lot of people don't want to. People don't want don't really transfer over to social media like different social yeah. media like that. You know what I'm saying? So if you have right. a YouTube presence, people who fuck with YouTube is gonna fuck with you on YouTube. Right. If you have an IG presence, people who fuck with IG is gonna fuck with you there or or Snapchat or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Usually people fuck with one. People are usually on all of them, but they really does mess with one. You know what I'm saying? That's true. That makes sense. Yeah, I, and I think it's important to really appreciate the small wins. You no, know, everyone, yeah. everyone gets caught up in, in like, oh, you know, well, if I'm not getting thousands of streams or thousands of new followers, it's like, be be thankful for like, I'm thankful for the 50 real fans that followed me yeah. in my show last night. Like, that's 50 new people that genuinely love what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. Like, <laughs> you, you can't, you can't beat that feeling. You can't, no. you can't get that. Like, that's truly organic. Let's say, yo, I just say, it, every one person that finds out who you are, they're gonna be like, yo, I'm gonna fuck with her over and over again. And that's what you want. It's one person at a time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You grow yep. it that way one at a time, that's all you're gonna need. Exactly. And I'm telling you, man, like you, you really have something about you. You just keep on rocking the way you're doing. Thank um you. you know, like your story is insane. So you need to write a fucking book if you haven't thought about that already. I have thought about it. And I kind of figure like what I do through my music is not is similar to writing a book. You know what I mean? Like it's I even hard. thought about yeah, it's it's hard. Let me tell you because I've already written two last year. I'm, I'm writing Marvin Love Story. It's hard. It's no joke. You got it takes a lot of time, but it could be done, and you can still do it indie. Cause I did mine's indie as well. So nice. And you can have that as part of your merch, part of your website. Like yo, boom, get this. This is my story, and you'd be wow. surprised what people fucking get from it, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. <laughs> Cause you, Man, I wouldn't even know where to start. <laughs> honestly, like just like your mother said from the beginning, just start writing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Amen just, to that. Seriously. Yeah. You know, she gave you some great advice. Just start writing, and then you you start putting things together. You know, I did actually start writing a book about my grandma because my grandma, she's she's my warrior angel. She raised me and she taught me everything I know today and made me the woman that I am today. And uh, she died from lung cancer like a year after my mom died. And, um, you know, so I, I started writing a book about her life. And so I do, I feel like that is something that it's like kind of crazy now. Cause I was writing a book about her life because the shit that she had gone through in her life, it was so inspiring, but now it's almost like my life in the, the 32 years that I've been alive, I've experienced mo- more than probably most people will experience in their whole lifetime. And so you have something there. you owe that to yourself, you know? Yeah. It's it's another it's another connection for you and your fans, right? You know what I'm saying it depends, of course, how personal you want to get with it. Not everybody wants to be super personal, super open with their life. They want to have some type of privacy. Not, I respect that. Totally get that. I'm an but, open book. I I don't have any issue with any of that. And if that's the case, then definitely this is something you can really connect with your fans and your fan base about because that people want to know who you are. Your right. music your music gives that to them. Like people are fascinated. Like with Jay Z and Beyonce, because they're super secretive. Right. Like any little thing that kind of gets leaked, people go crazy for it just to show their imperfections. Right. So true. Yeah. And because we just don't know enough about them, right? Or Eminem, his he's pretty much an open book, but at the same time he he's super secretive. Like he'll go hide in his cave somewhere for a couple of years and pop out. Um, right. And people are like, well, what is he doing? Where he's at? He, I can't believe he still lives in Michigan. Why the fuck not? <laughs> you know, like, right. And he's also showing, like, yo, no, I could be the, the best rapper alive, and I'm I'm gonna stay home. Just like how yep. you chose us to go back home. You're like, yo, I'll go to L.A. to probably fuck with that studio or that producer, but as soon as I'm done, I'm going back home. Yeah, that is, that is what I'm planning on doing because my family is originally from L.A. So I, my mom grew up in Hollywood and. Uh, so I got family down there. So I'm planning on going down there like once a month to do hair, make some money and start building a name for myself down there and getting in with the, with the people down there and per- performing and getting in studios and stuff. But I, I always will stay humble to myself and stick to my roots because being up here is what keeps me grounded. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause once you see it's going a little crazy and all that, you can always pull out and say, you yeah. know what? I tried it. I don't like the way who I'm fucking with. I'll come back again right. in a different direction, and that's it. Because now you really have control of this vehicle now. Yep, I you do. Have, you have total control. You're, you're definitely in the driver's seat, and you can pick up whoever you want to pick up and put in the car with you. <laughs> yeah, it's it is kind of it's exciting, and like I really feel like this. I'm just 
everything that I've gone through, I feel like has led me to this point to where I can now share my story with people. And like, that's my main goal with my music is to share like all the different obstacles that I've been through in my life and to show people like you can either become a victim of your environment or you can rise from it and learn from it and become better because of it. And I want to show people that that is the road I chose and, and that they can too, you know, and they don't have to let their struggle define who they are as a person. No, not at all. You know, and you definitely embody all of that. Like, like your story is fucking real and, and tough as shit. Like, and just to show how tough you are, you know, to say, you know, fuck that, came out the divorce, wasn't the best situation. Your living situation was obviously a struggle, but you, you know, shit didn't let you, it, it didn't stop you. You just kept kept moving. Yeah, like, keep grinding. My grandma always taught me, we're warriors, Shawnee. We don't give up. <laughs> we fight to the end. <laughs> so, so when that time was happening, I know you had to have some crazy me mental breakdowns. Or, yeah. or how how did you get through that? My daughter, honestly, like she she literally was what kept me going because I knew that I had to be strong for her. You know, like there were so many times I actually like recorded myself a year ago, like when I first left my ex and I, w I would do like a, I call it a divorce diary and I would okay. like record myself every couple days, every couple nights, like just kind of documenting like where I was in that time. And like, I, I only did it for like a month and then I just life got away from me, but I actually look back, it's almost been a year and I just looked back at the videos this last week and it is insane. Like I had bags under my eyes cause I wasn't sleeping. I wasn't eating. I was just so stressed out. Like literally had zero dollars was like scrounging money just to buy McDonald's for me and my girl. Like, <laughs> cause I wasn't doing hair at that point. Like I had taken a couple of years off when I got pregnant with her. So I, I had to literally move home, try to find a place to do hair and rebuild my clientele starting over again. I mean, it just was like, it almost makes me want to cry. I get super emotional over it because, you know, I, my mom passed away when I was 23 and my grandma passed away when I was 26 and like not having them here during the hardest time of my life was the hardest thing I've ever gone through. And I didn't have those people to hold me and hug me and love on me and be like, Shawnee, it's going to be okay. Like I, my, my best friends were the ones that were there for me. Like my best friend, Rena, who I moved in with, she took me in and like completely helped, helped me through that time. And like, all my girls were there for me. You know, it just like my, my siblings were there for me. I have three siblings and we're all tight as fuck. Like we are a unit. And, um, you know, it's just, it's crazy. Like I f literally feel like I was fighting tooth and nail, like crawling on my hands and knees, just like the last year, like trying to just survive. And I finally feel like in the last few months, like I'm coming out of it, you know, and it's, I'm finally like things are turning around and things are getting better. And, it's help. The music is just like, I feel like that's what you could feel so much when I perform is I, I just have nothing to lose. Like I'm all in. Yeah. You, you know? can tell, you can tell like you really, you really make the stage your home. Like you really fucking crush it on stage. Like, Thank you. Yeah, you. From what I've seen, like, you know, you have a great, great presence about yourself and, um, it's my alter th ego. She gets up there and she just takes over. <laughs> you, you have a name for that alter ego? Uh, man, I, well, I think, I think Shawnee gold is the alter ego. Okay. You know what I mean? And then, um, I don't know. It's, it's just kind of weird. Like how it, even sometimes when I'm writing, it's like something's coming out of me and I'm not even like in control. Really? All the, I swear to God, it's the craziest thing. Like something will just come over in the middle of writing and I'm writing and I'm writing and I'm writing and I get done writing like eight bars and I look down and I'm like, whoa, what the fuck was that? Like, and I just sit there and by myself and I just start laughing and like, oh my God, that was so dope. <laughs> 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 like, what the fuck? I'm so excited for that. <laughs> <sighs> yes. yeah. No, I hear that, man. Like, so it's crazy. Like, you know, I think, I think that's what really hip hop or just music is about in general, right? It's about musicians really come about artists come about because of pain yeah it's right? true. It's, it's it's crazy right so yeah a lot, a lot of times you know like people always want you know when artists come out with back-to-back -back, you know songs or albums or whatever and it's tough it's not easy to create especially when when things are going good it's <laughs> true that is so true you're like you're not inspired right <laughs> no. it's, it's, it's tough like for me i need i need drama I need mm -hmm. strife. I need tension. I need I need challenge. I need confusion to come up with the best shit I can write or come up with. Yes, me too. 
you know, and then when things are going yeah. good, it's like, I'm, I'm happy for it. Don't get me wrong. But it's like, damn, I wish I could just stump my toe or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how I felt like the past like five to six years. Like I was just so focused on doing shit. Like nothing too bad was going on at that time. Like I couldn't have written if I wanted to, cause I wasn't inspired, you know? And it is true. That's, that's weird how it's like that. Isn't it? Like it's, it's, it's crazy, but that's, yeah. that's where you get your, your best music from from true artists like yourself, right? Like it's like you don't want nothing bad to happen. <laughs> it's like yo, but no. damn, you have to take time off. I think so. Let me ask you this: I know you're going, you're going, you're grinding, and you're hustling, and you're really, you know, you're pushing shit out there. Now, because of that, like I just said, like you know, you also got to give time for yourself too, right? Oh yeah. So All how is balance. right? Yeah. So so, but balance doesn't mean fifty fifty, right? Mm-hmm. Balance can it's depending on 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 Ashani's world balance could be 70 30 balance could be 60 40 right so mm-hmm. you can't have a, a truly a 50 50 because it really doesn't exist right because you already experienced that in your marriage right right so what is for you now what does that balance look like because you, you are you are separating yourself in many ways currently but because you're in your hair you know you have a family of your own with your, with your child and you have your 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 passion your purpose in life that you want to go after so yeah. what is what does your balance look like right now? Yeah, so I mean those are the those are the three things that my life consists of. My daughter, which her name is Haven. Uh, so my life consists of Haven, music and hair. And those are the three things that I I mainly focus my energy on. And I share my uh, my daughter with my ex-husband. Uh, we have joint custody, you know. Okay. So she goes back and forth 50-50. And so I really try to spend most of my time when I have her with her. But, um, I, you know, when you, if you look on my Instagram, like a lot of times I'm at rehearsal, she's running around, like playing with other kids and shit. And like, I'm, you know, I, every night when I put her to bed, I lay her down to sleep. I come out here and instead of turn on the TV, I turn on the music and I start writing. And so that's when I, you know, it's just all about finding balance, but I really try to, when I'm with her, I focus on her. When I'm working, I focus on working, but I'm also sharing my music with my clients. I'm like always trying to throw music in there any way that I can. Um, but I, I also set specific times like throughout the day and throughout the week to focus on it so that I can give it my undivided attention. You know, that's, it's kind of that, that work, that work life balance. Um, but for me, like I look at, at music as not necessarily, I don't know if I, like, I look at it as work, but I also look at it as life because it is who I am as well. So I just try to, I just try to influence it or influence. I I try to incorporate it into just my everyday life. So that's always constantly being a part of it, you know? That's great. I think a lot of times we get, um, we get sidetracked because we get taught from an early age of what life's supposed to be instead Mm -hmm. of just feeling just feeling what life you want it to have, you know, you either totally get the, get the job, get the career, go after the same shit your parents are trying to go after instead of always just listening to your own self. Right. So, uh, it's like what I said earlier about, about school, not everyone's going to go to school. Not school's not for everybody and neither is a nine to five, you know, um, sometimes nine to right. five could be, could be painful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. And it also, it also stops you from creating, right? Because you'd be like, damn, these next eight hours, I could be writing this. I could be in the studio. Yeah. I could be doing this shit. I could be on stage. I'm mean, this is some motherfucker right here. And um, how do you, I guess, because you could really, I guess because you own your own hair, your hair salon and stuff, you have more of an opportunity to schedule yourself. Yeah, um, I run my own books. I run my own schedule. Yeah, so right there, you you empowered yourself a lot. So, what can you, I guess, give, especially that the female artist? What kind of advice can you give them if if someone's listening right now, that's just found out who Shawnee Gold is, and they're trying to rap just like you? Like, what kind of advice can you give them? Just stay writing. I think that's the most important thing that you can do is write and write, and then when you're done writing, write some more <laughs> and continue right. writing because. Um, you know, as a female, you're going to get judged way more already. It's just part of, part of it. So if you plan on doing this, you better be coming with some shit because if you don't, you know, people are going to call you out on that. Yeah. No, you yes, know, that's great. So for me, like my, my number one most important thing is not to put out as much music as I can. It's about quality over quantity. You know what I mean? So I, sometimes I'll rewrite a song two or three times if I don't feel like it's lyrically, the way that I want it to be or the standard that I 
that I feel is, is what I can put out, then I won't put it out or I'll, I'll sit on that song for another month or so until I feel like it's ready or I'll rewrite it. You know, do you sometimes feel you're a perfectionist? A hundred percent. I know I am <laughs> to a fault sometimes, but to me, I'd rather be like that than be lazy. It's actually so funny you say that because me and my engineer got into a little tiff last week because I have a song that I'm getting ready to mix and master, but I wanted to re-record the first verse because I just I just didn't feel you know like it was my best, and I feel like I got to follow my gut. And he's like, Shawnee, this song has already been done for two months. Like, just let it go, be done with it. You need to put it out. Um, <laughs> but I'm still re-recording it because <laughs> like, I can't like if I sit and listen to something and I, and I have a little bit of like oh fuck I could have done that better I can't do it like I don't care I don't care if it takes me another month to put it out it's going to sound better and I want to be 100% about my shit when it's out there because then at least if I feel 100% and anyone talks shit on it I don't care because then I know I still did my best but if I'm like you're right like I know I could have done better than that then I'm going to be beating myself up over it forever you know <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I love your fucking work ethic. It's it's insane. I love it. <laughs> Thank but, you. But that's that's the best way to do it, though, right? It's again, I, I I just feel like everything you're talking about today, tonight, is that um, you you have total control. Like everything you're talking about, everything you've been hitting on, everything you've been saying, without you saying it, is like, yo, I finally got my shit back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and the choices are mine. So fuck the engineer. You're gonna, I'm gonna rewrite it anyway. You're, <laughs> you're, you're gonna do what the fuck I tell you to, regardless. <laughs> and, yeah, he's my homie. He always gives me it. shit, but you know, I'm like, yeah. At the end of the day, I'm like, this is what I'm doing, and he's like, all right, Shawnee, I got you. You know, <laughs> no doubt. And that's he so he understands it, and I think he respects it at the same time. You know, no, that's badass. That's badass. I think that's know, funny think, you said the comeback because that, that's actually one of the the titles I'm considering for uh, my EP name. That's. I think you should, man. I think yeah. it should really, you know, connect with that and and kind of get that out of your way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because everything you're writing right now is going to be because of that. Right. And, um, and it could be a way for you to say, you know what? This is how I'm dealing with it. This is how I'm voicing it. Let me get this shit out the fucking way, and exactly. and that's it. And and you know, you got to poison out your life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and that's what it came down to. Past ten years, you know, you were you were just toxic. Yeah, you know it, and I don't want to make it sound all bad. Like I, I no, no, not at all. Really but great moments, you know. Absolutely, and everyone does. You know, um, I had I'm from a divorce as well, and you know, I I, I can't say it was horrible or the whole damn time, right? But, but there were some strong moments that were yeah, it was fucking horrible, right? It, it was like, yo, why am I with this person? And then that's why we're not together anymore. And the same thing yeah. with you. You know, yeah. if it was all peachy clean, then we wouldn't be talking about you being separated after 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would have been a different story. You know, right. and it is what it is. And you got to take ownership of it. And it does take two to tango. So, like, not every, that, it's, it's always two sides to every story. You know what I'm saying? Right. But when you take on, you know, and you and you're living something that is poisonous, but you don't know it because you're so used to taking medicine like that. <laughs> you know, right. it's like you don't you don't know it's, you're sick in a relationship. It's true. It's crazy. Love is blind a lot of times, you know. And it is when you snap out of it and wake up. It's like, damn. Like, you know, my friends like, hello, like Shawnee's back. You know what I mean? No, and then no one can tell you any different either. Friends, family, whatever. Like, you know, they yeah. can. They can. They can advise you and say, "Yo, oh, this is what I'm seeing. I don't like this motherfucker or whoever. But you're going to be like, yo, that's my man. Chill the fuck out. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, and you, you're doing your wife duty. You're doing what you're doing. You know? Right. And, yeah. Um, no one can fault you for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like you said, you had some great moments. You actually built something together. But I think it was a learning lesson for you because now you have your own business regardless because you built your own business before. Yeah. With the network marketing shit, right? So now. Mm hmm you, you got your clientele up. You work on your fucking passion project for your life. Like, and like that's dope as hell to have this freedom and say, yo, you know what? It's not about the bag. I'm not going to try to sell myself out. I'm going to do it my fucking way. And I'm going to succeed because I'm I'm putting it out there. I am going to fucking succeed. Exactly. Yeah. I'm living life and I'm so happy right now. This is the happiest I've been in years. 
No, you, know? you can hear it. You can hear it in your voice that you're fucking happy. Freedom like, is it, priceless. <laughs> it's dope as fuck. Like if people don't understand that shit. Like you know, and it, toxicness comes from a lot of lot of varying things. Like it could be from a job. It could be from a relationship. It could be from yeah. just friends or family, whoever you have in your fucking circle. And if you don't take a chance in yourself like you have, if you don't, if you're not willing to really go a hundred percent in and and take a risk, then you're never gonna achieve what you want to achieve. It's so true. I I think the biggest life lesson that I've learned from, you know, what I've gone through is like no one is going to take care of you better than you, you know, and my grandma always taught me that like no one is going to have your back like you have your back, Shawnee. So make sure that you always have your back more yeah. than anybody else. And and I got to a point in my life where I didn't have my back. I gave up myself for someone else and I gave myself to someone else and then it got fucking stomped on and it made me realize that the only person I would ever do that for again in my life is my daughter honestly because I'm responsible for her and she is my life and I will give my life for her but now it's so Absolutely. different you know what I mean you know you have kids yeah. too yeah I right? do you know what that uh, love's like it's it's crazy because you're right that like you would do um you do anything for him. Like my daughter's birthday, uh, we had actually went to a birthday party yesterday for her, nice. and uh, she turned 11, and um, she's just getting something damn big, preteen shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's oh, like yeah. I'm looking at her. I'm playing laser tag. We hung in laser tag together and shit. And um, you're right. Like everything I'm doing, I'm looking at, especially with this podcast. I'm like, no, I'm 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 gonna make your life easy. You know, I want to I wanna make sure that you have everything I didn't have. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, I want to give you more than what I had. And me putting myself out there, me me just sliding in people's fucking DMs. <laughs> it's like, yo, like, right. <laughs> like this, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, yo, I'm hitting people up left and right. And right. If someone responds, that's great. If they don't, I don't. I, I, I take no issue with it. I hit you up. I hit you up again maybe a couple months from now. See what you exactly. think. Exactly. Yeah. And that is it. You know what I'm saying? You so when I hit put you yourself up, out yeah. there, yeah. When I found you on IG, it was straight to you know underground hip hop hashtag I'm following. Wow. Um, and you were like, yo, I didn't know my hashtags were working. <laughs> like, yeah, that that's dope. That makes me feel good because I wasn't even doing the hashtags in the beginning and you know, and I was like trying to teach myself. No, like, and then I, I found just like, let, me, let me check her out. I was like, and I, I really wanted you know, to get more female artists on. Whether mm -hmm. it's producers, engineers, you know, hip hop artists, I'm like, yo, like, let me see what's out there, um, underground um, wise. And I was like, I found you. I said, like, man, she sounds dope. I said, what? And I was like, let me, let me hit her up. Let me see what she's down with. If she's not, that's fine. I just keep it moving. But if she is, let me see if we can put something together. And you responded to me. I said, me, you've been texting the whole damn week. <laughs> and, yeah, um, I, yeah, I was excited for this. I really, I think it's uh, going to be cool to have this documented. This early on in my in my stage, you know, of this part of my music. Absolutely, that's what I tell a lot of people. I say, listen, if you're skeptical about it. Listen to a couple of my podcasts first, and really understand like this is really the platform. I'm just a gatekeeper. This platform belongs to you. To you, and like this is whatever right. you want. Like you want to hit me up next month and say, yo, my EP's out. Let's. I want to. I want to talk about it. Oh, that's cool. Okay, good to know. You, you know, what I'm saying like this is all yeah. about you. Like you know. 2020 hits and you want to you know you go on a super tour that you talked about and you want to just blow it up yeah we could we could chop it up and talk about that like this platform is for you you know what that's i'm saying so cool it's, yeah it's, it's all about you getting it off your chest whatever you want to talk about even though it has to be a bit about hip-hop you know what i'm saying right. it's popping off in your life right now that's affecting you a certain way you're like you know what i got something to say and i know johnny would put me on my platform where i can say it to everybody I love that. That'd be cool to be able to link it up in my Instagram, you know, and then all my my yeah. fans can check it out anytime that they want. Absolutely. And this is something you have forever where you even have your little girl listen to. Yeah, you know, definitely. She, she would have this ongoing to listen to what her mom spoke about. Yeah. You know, it, it's just love that. documenting shit nowadays is the way to go where you can really pass something on that's tangible to your to your, to the next generation. You know, all I had from my last generation were just pictures, right? Just still, right. still pictures and maybe a note here and there you may find if someone actually was a journal writer, right? But if they weren't, you're just looking at memories that you may have had. And most pictures I've been looking at, like, oh, damn, I, I, was in, I was in that shit. I don't remember that shit. Where was I? <laughs> right. right, yeah. When you're using YouTube, using any of these platforms, especially IG, like, 
it's there forever. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah, that's true. That it's Facebook is a great example of that. Stuff pops up from ten years ago. Yeah, that, that bug that freaks me out. And bug, you know, bugs me out. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Like, uh, holy yeah, shit. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm like, some things I don't want to remember. Now. <laughs> exactly right. But then it's yeah. it's part of life, though, right? It's it's, it's part of your history. Yeah, it's I feel true. like that's what makes you know. say so I think that that your marriage is it was was meant to be. It was. I have no regrets. You know, it it taught me a lot about love, about what I want out of love, what I don't want out of love. And I know, at least for now, love is not in my near future. <laughs> stay focused. No, no, stay focused in your love for hip hop. You know, that, that should yeah. be you know, like, you know, everything else will come to you. Yeah. Uh, you seem like a huge, huge magnet. So I think. Thank you, gonna, Johnny. Yeah. You're going to bring a lot of shit to you when um, just, you know, you have a great head on your shoulder, so I think you're going to be just fine. It's like you have a solid circle yeah. with, your, with your squad, and I think they're going to be really your your gatekeepers for you. They're going to watch out for you. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that, that's dope. And um, you got you to put them out there. Like, you know, do a whole special gold squad. If you want, we can, out, we can come back on with them. We can chop it up with them, too. Yes. With, oh, with, they would love that. <laughs> <laughs> with the ghost they would squad. be so down. Yeah, and, and just, just talk a bunch of shit or whatever you want to talk about. It doesn't matter. You just let me know what you want to talk about. I'm down with it. All right, so. cool. I'll definitely start thinking of some stuff. And uh, yeah. I appreciate you taking time out of your life to do this with me. No, no, because uh, I I thank you for letting me in your life. You know what I'm saying? So for sure, I learn I learn from every person I chop it up with. Yeah, and um, I take that and I use it for myself and for my listeners you know what i'm saying so this is this is all about learning and it about is yeah about supporting one another because we don't do that enough i you know agree there needs to be more love in the world absolutely you know what I'm yeah. saying? so anybody could talk shit real easy anybody could be a fucking troll that's fantastic good for you right but at the end of the day who's really showing you love who's honestly uh, honest about it and willing to, to give that back you know what i'm saying so yep you found it here you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. yeah. But thank well, thank you. you. For, uh, thank you for you being so open and honest with your story. I really do appreciate that. Like it's fucking amazing. Um, and people, this is this is Shawnee Gold. Um, I'm gonna put up the, her music, her new her new single up, so you guys can listen to it. Um, keep it real is what it's called. Yeah, yeah. available on all platforms tonight at eight o'clock. It's crazy. It's going to be fantastic. Her EP is going to be coming out as soon as she gets it all together. We're going to have her come back on. She's going to talk about it. And maybe we do a whole kind of, we'll play each song type of thing. We just break down each song or whatever. So, yeah. You know, we'll, we can do that in the future. We'll talk about it. That um, sounds good. Thank you so much for your time. I know all you're right, busy, Johnny. Busy. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to, to share this with everybody and get your name out there, too, and show you some love. Appreciate that. Um, we're gonna definitely work in the future together a lot more. So let's make that happen. You have a great, great night. All right, you too. Good talking with you. Same here. All right, bye. Yo. As I sit here in my bed, my paper's anxious for the pen The ink's barely creeping out, overwhelmed on where to begin There's so much I wanna say that I'm completely lost for words So sometimes I speak in tongues just to make sure that you heard God I'm coming to you, broken down and on my knees I'm begging for your mercy, please just tell me it's a dream I need some clarity, do you really love me? Cause where I stand and how I feel, it's like you think that I'm diseased Reminiscing on my life and the shit that I've been through I'm starting to think that maybe I've been wearing the wrong shoes Is it true what they say, you only give us what we can handle? At the rate that I'm going, I feel like I'm drowning in this manhole Truly thought I was here to prove a point and make a stand In this moment, I'm so weak and disbelief is part of your plan How can I keep the faith with so much anger from this pain? It's time to throw up my hands and say fuck it to this game Play all day, all I do is keep it real, don't play these games Ain't nobody got time to maintain the thoughts in your brain So stay out my way, out my way Play all day, all I do is keep it real, don't play Barely get along Those times I put my hands to the sky And reach for the alarm Dropping bombs like that dad Crazy like the Mad Hatter My life 
faster Tornado, hurricane, a natural disaster Pick up the plaster, piece it back together The weather twists and turns, blaze it up and burn I got a firm grip, time to redirect that shit Flip the script, pistol whip this bitch Now nah, you can't fuck with this It's my life, crazy as it seems Nightmares in my dreams Waking up, I think it's a fantasy Take a look around, no one punking me Creeping in disguise, a facade Fucking blasphemy Wrath of me, who I be, Shawnee Gold Bold and courageous, speaking from my heart It's contagious, about to go ape shit on your fakeness Take this to my left brain It's on its A-game, uncontrollable, untamed Follow the maze to my mainframe Picture this, what I say, knee deep at wordplay, yo I ain't never fitting in